All right, now that we've got our site up and live, let's customize that URL to make it a little bit more user-friendly and human-friendly and add a post. Simple as that. So let me jump right over to our studio. Um, you should be, at this point, uh, already have a project set up, a blog down, site built, pushed to GitHub, and pulled from Netlify, and it should be live. Um, so this is uh, tutorial number six. Sorry about my hair. It's been um, a couple of months now because of the uh, pandemic. I haven't had a haircut. Uh, but this is tutorial number six. So there are six total. If you want to start from the beginning, that would probably be your best bet. I will, at the end of all of this, have a condensed version with every single step included condensed. But I still highly recommend going through the entire process. That being said, here is my famous intro. It's not much of an intro, but what I do is I create content online and then I teach you how I actually create that content online so that you also can make tutorials like this. So I'll give you the technology, what I use, and that's my uh, blog site or my website, Mark Gingrass and another uh, YouTube channel. This is the R channel, so let's stick to that. And what we're gonna do is go back to the Netlify site so you should have that up. It's just plain netlify.com. So net netlify.com, there we go, right here. So log in and you should get to a page where all of your sites that are deployed uh, are available. Simple as that. Let's make this one quick and simple. Click on the site that we just worked on, which was for me, the project one. It should be the top one most likely if you've been following. Okay, now simple as that, let's figure out how do we get back to that site, right? So you see it right here. This is where the site is. That's an ugly looking website name. So let's fix that. Click on domain settings and custom domains. Now, if you owned your site like cradletograver.com or markgingrass.com, that's a different story. We're gonna use Netlify's free version completely throughout this tutorial. And then later on in another tutorial, I'll teach you how to add a custom domain. But what we want to do is just change this particular domain. So click on options and edit site name. That's how simple it's going to be. So we're going to call this uh, project one underscore, oh, I guess they don't let you do underscore dash test. I don't know how many other projects throughout the entire Netlify ecosystem there are called project one slash test. So we might run into a problem because as you can see, you're still going to have the dot Netlify dot AS or APP on there. But I'll save it anyways. And now our website is a little bit more user friendly. So you can totally share this website with anybody in the entire world and it will be up and running. Now, the next part, the cool part, let's add a actual post to this site and have that continuous integration, continuous deployment, set it all up for us. Let's jump back to our project here. Here we are. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, it's so simple. We go to the add-ins. You should have your project open, your project one, or whatever you called it, uh, as a blog down site. All right, so new post, simple as that, new post. And now it gives us a bunch of options. So let's give it a title. Uh, we'll call this uh, almost done. Categories. So whatever category you pick, our, our studio, whatever you pick, it'll start to remember your categories and it'll give you the auto-populated list next time. And same thing with tags, whatever you want to do. Now these are all fake and I'm going to delete all this so I'm not too worried about it. All right, then you can post your file name. It's automatically put there. However, if you would like a different file name, you can totally do that as well. I would research some SEO, like some how do I create websites that are easily searchable by Google or whatever search engine you want to use, right? And use that. Let's go ahead and click on our markdown only because the previous ones are our markdown and I don't know if they work for everything yet. I haven't tested it. You can test it out for me and let me know in the comments. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to do our markdown and we'll go from there. We'll go from there. So click on done. All right. So that's simple enough. We have this new file that's set up called 2020.06.13, almost done, right? Uh, this top part where the dashes are, that's your YAML code with some of your uh, metadata that you have, like the title, the author, those are all metadata for building the actual site. So let's go below the YAML and let's just start a double header here. So header, header, and just say header one and say, this is some text. I don't care. And we'll say header two. 
Now this is a markdown, right? So, so we can get pretty complicated with this. We can add tabs, we can add new pages. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we can do, but let's stick to some basic R markdown here. And of course, your code can go here as well. So let's do backticks, open bracket, open brace R, and then backticks to close it out. I forget the shortcut key. It's I switch between a Mac and a PC, and and I don't do this very often. So all right, let's do uh, my data is equal to the MT cars database and we will also uh, plot it and it should be a really kind of a funky matrix plot or some sort I'm gonna go ahead and hit that play button right here and we should see the plot because it's an R markdown or maybe if it's an R notebook well okay I don't see it maybe it's because it's a markdown and not a notebook file might be that case let's continue on anyways because I think it's still gonna work so control s to save this so make sure it's saved before you do anything Let's jump back down to the console. Now, now that we're in the console, let's build, rebuild the site. You can see uh, up here in the right-hand corner that as I make changes, anything that's changed that you're trying to push to GitHub will automatically appear here so that you can stage it and commit it and push it, right? So that being said, let's build this site. So blog down, build, build site and let it run. It's gonna make some changes to the public folder because that's where really all the action happens. That's quite a bit. Now, again, I use the shell to stage all this, but uh, there's not that many here, so let's try to do it manually, okay? Um, I actually don't need to stage the content. I only need to stage the public stuff. Um, if you are sharing your entire content, your code, everything on GitHub, you can share everything, that's fine but I can select just the public and it should still technically work, but it's gotta be everything in public. Also, using the command line is actually a little bit easier than this because I can just say, do the whole directory, call it, call it good. <laughs> so I regret clicking these already, but that's okay. Almost there. Uh, static post, I don't think we need that. It's not in public. We only need what's in public. So as you can see, I only have public. Um, the A's and the M's mean something. I think modified versus added, and there's a couple other letters in there. All right, so that's what we want to stage. We built it. The key is you got to build it first, then stage it, then commit it. So remember the name of this is called Almost Done. I'm oh before I do that, let's go back to here to prove that Almost Done does not exist. I just I just did a test post a few minutes ago, and Almost Done is not here. Okay, so it's non-existent. Let's see how fast this thing will work. Back to project, click on commit, commit test live, because this is, I'm gonna not edit this at all, guys. <laughs> and push, unless of course something drastic happens and I have to like go back, but there we go. Close, exit, I'm not even gonna check GitHub because I'm really caring about the actual site right now. Now, it automatically detects, Netlify will detect did something change in my public folder? And because I pushed it to GitHub, the new stuff, the new post, it should have. So I'm gonna click on refresh and hopefully we see that almost done here, which we, do we, do we, do we? Maybe it's a little bit too soon. Let's check over here real quick. Let's go to um, our deploys here. And this very, let's see, published, commit, li commit test live is here. This was, looks like it should be should be deployed so let me click on academic let's click on posts test post that's not what we called it right <laughs> I think we called it almost done let's double check again I think okay it is called almost done and let's jump back it should be fairly simple to fix I believe we should just instead of Maybe it doesn't check the site that often, so let's clear cache and deploy site now automatically. There could be some settings in there that make it uh, check only every like hour, 10 minutes. I have no idea how often it'll ping that public folder to see if there's any differences. Uh, but it looks like the last deploy was 305 and it's 307 now, so, and it says published, so it should have worked. Well, let's just double check. I'll refresh this, and it says published. Let's try one more time. Oh, or what site is this? Project one test, yes, refresh. 
test posts. You know, I had this problem earlier. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, my first real post is the... I'm going to close it. Let's click on this. Posts. Test posts. Not almost done. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's click on this. I'm going to go to preview deploy. It might be something I'm missing. Test posts. Okay. Back to R it is. <laughs> back to the editing mode. Ah, where did these come from? Oh, those were there. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I'll just let's just commit it all then. Why not? Commit. Test. Sorry. Push. I'm wondering one other thing. I'm wondering if I actually do have to build this site at all because I think maybe Netlify does that for us. So maybe the public folder is not what they need, but it's monitoring the public folder, so that's my thought process on that. At least I thought they were. Let's double check to see if this works now. Uh, let's redeploy. And while it's doing it, I'll click on it so we can see what's going on. See, preparing, installing dependencies, everything seems to be good, checks unmatched. Uh, it's still going. Everything looks good. Site is live. Site is live. I don't know why they call it preview. Maybe that's... Oh, that is a preview. That URL does not make sense for us because we changed it. So posts, almost done is there. Ooh, okay. That's Now we have to troubleshoot to see if it's because... It's not really the public folder that you need, and it's and it's everything but the public folder, maybe. I am sorry about that. <laughs> I think, anyways. Let me close these. Now, that's a preview. Why didn't it work with our actual site name that we just created? Let's double check. Published. It's published. It should be this, project1.test.netofi. Posts. Almost done. Well, maybe we have to put everything in there instead of the public or including the public. I don't know. And I'm sorry about that. I hope this actually works for you. <laughs> I hope that the previous tutorials worked and somebody comments showing that, hey, this doesn't work for me so I can go back and fix it. In fact, they're not that hard to do. So if it is wrong, I will probably redo that entire section of the video. So, but I wanted to get you this far, guys. So there you are. There you have it. It worked. You see it's there. It's under this URL that's customized. And the post is there, the almost done post. And luckily, the plot showed up. So we'll have to experiment with the R Markdown notebook and the MD files instead of the RMD files, et cetera, et cetera, to see uh, if they'll all publish. I don't know because I didn't build this theme, right? So, well, keep exploring. I hope this helps. And... You know, please uh, commit to continuing to uh, share my content to help this channel grow. And I appreciate everything you guys have been doing. Bye.